Well, hello everyone. This is Pastor Mark. I want to welcome you to Amalon United Methodist Church as we, once again, remotely, virtually, come together in fellowship to worship our Lord and Savior, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Last week, we celebrated resurrection in a special way as we celebrated Easter Sunday. And though it wasn't an ideal celebration in the, in the sense that we didn't come together face to face, we still witnessed to his resurrection, his mightiness, his love, his grace, and his mercy. And we did it together, though virtually, we did it as a church. And I want to thank you all for joining in on that worship service last week. Um, gotten a lot of good feedback about it. If you haven't seen it yet, please go watch it. Uh, I think it will bless you. It certainly blessed all of us who had a hand in making uh, that video. But uh, today, it's no less celebratory. We are coming together to say thank you to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all that he's done in our lives. And we're coming together to witness to his resurrection, to witness to his grace together as a church. Won't you join me in that? Let's get going in our service today. Let's get going with our worship, but first let's start it off right through prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to do this. And thank you for being our risen Savior of power, might, knowledge, and everything we need. You are our sufficiency. May we witness that today. May the power of your Spirit fill each of us. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Tiago and the praise team have some music for us. Let's get to it. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles 
Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Well, hello everyone. This is Pastor Mark. And you're joining me today at the Calvin Falwell Field, Calvin Falwell Airport, just outside of Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm standing in front of November 6774 Sierra, which is a little Cessna 150 that's based out of here, owned by a friend of mine, a couple friends of mine. And, uh, we're going to be talking today about a passage of Scripture that I think is very contextual to 
where we are today. And that is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Let me read those verses for you here this morning as we get started. Isaiah writes these words, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Folks, you know, we're in a difficult time right now. And I know we talk about this a lot, but it's a difficult time. We're, we're quarantined at home. We are uh, fearful of this coronavirus. And then, of course, we have all the other things in our lives that, that hold us back and burden us. Relationship problems, maybe financial problems, uh, uh, work problems. The, the list goes on and on. We are not want for problems, burdens, and issues in our world. And I think in times like this, it's passages like Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31 can really speak to our hearts. And I want to go through these verses very briefly this morning and see how they can help us in a time like this. And I want to start off with where Isaiah starts off in, in these verses. He starts off with describing for us who God is. Listen to what he says. He says, do you not know? Have you not heard? I mean, come on, folks. He's saying, have you not heard what I'm about to tell you? This is easy stuff. This is stuff we've talked about before, right? And then he goes on to say, the Lord is the everlasting God. A repeat of Psalm 90, verse 2. Everlasting and everlasting is our God. The Lord is our everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. You know, he's describing God there as an omnitemporal God, a God who is not bound by time, a God who is not, doesn't have to watch the clock like we do, a God that doesn't have a beginning and an end, a God who is everlasting from infinite beginning to the infinite future. Omnitemporal, the everlasting God. And not only that, but the God of creation, the God who created all of this, everything that we see, everything that we experience, everything that we are, was made by God Almighty. Isn't that amazing? So Isaiah starts off in this passage by just describing God as this God that's not bound by time and not bound by all these cre- uh, uh, the creation around him because he created it. And then he goes on. He doesn't stop there with his description of God. He says, uh, he will not grow tired or weary. Do you hear that? He will not grow tired or weary. He is almighty. This is not a God who's going to get spent at some point and go, oh, I'm done, guys. I can't go anymore. That's not the God we serve. He does not grow weary. He does not grow tired. And he continues. And his understanding, no one can fathom. In other words, God's understanding is beyond anything we could even imagine. He's omniscient. He knows all. Isaiah's describing an omnitemporal God, an almighty God, an omniscient God. And he continues. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. He's not only omniscient. He's not only omnitemporal. He's not only omnipotent. Uh, almighty, but he is what? Omnipotent, all-powerful. Isaiah throw, pulls out all the stops. He says, I'm going to tell you who this God is. Have you not heard? This is the almighty, omniscient, omnipotent, omnitemporal God of creation who created it all. And then we get to verse 30. Even youths grow weary and tired, and young men stumble and fall. Folks, if that's not a description of us and humanity, if that's not an anthropology, if you will, in Scripture, I don't know what is. He's just described God in all of His might and power and knowledge. And then He comes back and goes, and you know what? Even your young people, the ones who should be most vibrant and whose minds are most keen, even they grow tired and weary, and even they stumble and fall. What do you think you old people are going to do, right? I mean, that's really what Isaiah is saying. He's saying everybody, humanity fails, humanity stumbles, humanity grows tired and weary. Folks, he is juxtapositioning God and humanity right there in verses 28 through 30. Do you see that? 
Compared to God, we don't have the power. We don't have the knowledge. We don't have the endurance and the stamina that God does. We are weak. But then comes verse 31, the one we all know, the one we see on bumper stickers and stenciled on Bibles, and it says this, but. It starts off with but. But is a transition word, isn't it? It's a word that tells us we're moving to something different. And that something different is hope. Because he's just described God, and he's just described us. We pale in comparison to God. But, he says, those who hope in the Lord. And then he goes on to tell us what's going to happen for those who hope in the Lord. But let's talk about hope for a second. What's that mean? Hope in this sense is to put faith in, right? He's saying, for those who put their faith in God, for those who rest in God, for those who seek out God, for those who love God in the sense of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and in Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount, for those who hope in the God, for those who abide in God, for those who are obedient to God, that's what he's saying, for those who hope in the Lord, he will, no, wait a minute, stop there. He will, not he might, not that he can, not that he has the, but he will, Renew their strength. He will renew their strength. Notice that He will renew their strength. So that omnipotence of God, that God that never tires, He's the one that will give the power. He's the one that will give the strength to us. When we are obedient to Him, we abide in Him, we love Him, we have faith in Him, we follow Him. He will renew our strength. And those people will soar on wings like you. They will. Soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Four times he says they will. These are the promises that we have in Scripture. And we're out here at Calvin Falwell Field and we're standing in front of this Cessna 150 because, you know, have you, I, I, when I think about soaring, I think about the times when I was flying a lot. Yeah, you know, back in the day when I was flying planes and teaching people how to fly planes. I remember we'd get up in the air and you'd get up into those uh, higher altitudes where the wind was blowing and, and, and you could just feel the plane was just gliding right along. It was effortless. We could pull the power back and the plane would continue to fly. You'd get up in those winds and, and they would just carry you right along. I also think of the imagery in, which is being used here by Isaiah of the eagle. You know, when you see an eagle flying up high, it's not flapping its wings. It's not like a hummingbird flapping its wings a million miles an hour. It's just got its wings out. The wind is filling its wings, and it's soaring. Folks, that's the imagery here. When we, when we rest in God, when we rest in His promises, when we rest in Him, we're obedient to Him, we have faith in Him, right? We have hope in Him. Our wings are out, and He's filling our wings with air. We don't have to flap vigorously like a hummingbird to stay up and to stay afloat. We put our wings out. God fills our wings with air and we soar. How are you feeling today? I know some days I feel like a hummingbird, right? I'm sitting here flapping my wings a million miles an hour trying to stay up. But then when I hope in the Lord, when I step back and I say, God, you take control of this. You show me, you guide me, you direct me. I can almost feel spiritually my wings going out and God filling them with air. I feel like I'm in a Cessna 150 again. We're up high in the air. We're in the good winds aloft. We can pull the power back and just glide with that stream of air. I know we're under a lot of burden right now. And for some of you, for some of us, the coronavirus is the least of our worries. But whatever your worries are, whatever your stresses are, whatever the things that are keeping you up at night, as it were, my encouragement to you is to hope in the Lord. Put your faith in Him. Be obedient to Him. And you say, well, Pastor, how do, how do I do that? What, what does that look like? It starts with getting in His Word. We've talked about triangle faith a lot, and I haven't talked about it since this coronavirus, but I'm going to talk about it right now. We've talked about triangle faith. How do I fill myself with the Spirit? How do I put my wings out and fill my wings with God's air? I get in God's Word and I learn what He's telling me. I learn His truth. I fill my heart with it and my mind. Secondly, I pray to God. I communicate with Him through a vibrant and consistent prayer life. 
And then thirdly, I fellowship with other believers. Now, that's a little difficult right now, right? But we're doing it right now through technology. We can pick up phones and call one another, can't we? We can send emails. And I know most of you are doing these types of things. That's fellowship. Maybe it's not the ideal fellowship, but it is fellowship. But as we get into God's Word, as we pray to God, and as we fellowship, He fills us. And we get that ammunition, as it were, that we need in our lives to be able to tackle life each and every day, to spread our wings and let them be filled with God's air. I hope you believe that today. And I hope you'll take the time to adjust your life if you need to with Bible study and prayer and fellowship to receive those blessings from God. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for this day and the opportunity that we have to come together here in your word for just a few minutes. But a few minutes is really all we need. And if we do a few minutes a day, imagine how our lives can be changed. I know you know how our lives can be changed. But help us to imagine how our lives could be changed. Just a few minutes a day. Giving you and your word. A few minutes a day in prayer. A few minutes a day in fellowship. And it can change our lives. Convict our hearts and our spirits today. To seek that wind that you have to offer. To fill our wings so that we can soar on wings like eagles. Don't let us miss your blessings, Lord. Don't let us miss them even today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks. Soar on wings like eagles and do it today. We'll see you on Monday at our devotional. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, He is my song, because you are good. You 
Folks, I hope you enjoyed our worship service today. I hope it's blessed you in some way, and I hope that it changes you in some big or small way. Is God moving in your life? Are you soaring today? You know, we have a choice, don't we? We can just kind of pull ourselves through life, or we can soar. It's our choice. The choice is simple. What's your choice today? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our service. Thank you for our fellowship. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the church and the work that we get to do in our lifetimes to bring truth to the world around us, to bring grace to the world around us. And Lord, we can do that by pulling ourselves through, trudging through the mess, or we can soar. We can let your wind fill our wings. Lord, I pray the latter for each of us. I pray that we would rest in you and let you be our power. Let you be our knowledge. Let you be our might. And may we start that today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I hope you'll join us for our devotionals uh, each weekday morning. I uh, put those on Facebook and also send them out via email to my distribution list. If you want to be on that distribution list, uh, email me at marktinsley at org, and I'll gladly put you on it. If we don't see you at the devotionals, we'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week.